Welcome to Hello Chaos, the weekly podcast exploring the messy and chaotic minds of founders and entrepreneurs and innovators. We drop new episodes every Sunday. We do talk to founders and entrepreneurs from different industries at different company stages of all shapes and sizes. And we like to hear the raw, the real, the unbiased, the unvarnished founder stories. And I'm going to tell you, we go deep. It's not like other podcasts that, you know, ask two or three questions and bing, bang, boom, you might get a glimpse of their story. We actually go really deep. Um, and and our founders are telling us all of their secret sauce and their, their headaches and their wins. Uh, and it's why our tagline is where aha meets oh shit. Hello Cast is one of the many resources brought to you by Orange Whip. Orange Whip. That's WIP for work in progress. Orange Whip is a multimedia company brought to you. um, It's a multimedia company dedicated to serving founders and entrepreneurs in affiliate cities through hyper local media platforms that are designed to inform, inspire and create connections because we want to see founders and and business owners grow. We want to see them succeed. Orange Whip is an all-in-one content hub for founders with fresh and engaging stories, curated calendars, and local dynamic roadmaps so that the founders and entrepreneurs can navigate that local entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial ecosystem. We've taken all the hard work out of and all the pain, so you have one, one resource in your local market. Um, so never miss a deadline, never miss a event. Don't get that FOMO. Um, cause we, we've taken care of that for you. We're, we're one trusted source to find all the information you need as a founder, a business owner in your market. We are in three South Carolina cities today, but we are expanding in 2024. So send us a note if you need an orange whip in your city. So this is pretty special. The next two episodes we have, the end of the year, they actually, since we drop new episodes every Sunday, um, the next two scheduled are Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So we're going to do something a little bit special um, for these two episodes, end of the year. Um, This is episode 79. uh, And, you know, we're going to cover the best of Hello Chaos. We uh, recorded 48 podcasts in 2023, and we want to give you the highlights of the top 10. Um, so seven, episode 79 is going to be episodes, we're going to do a countdown 10 to 6, and then uh, episode 80, we will cover number 5 through number 1. It's the best of countdown. And these rankings, uh, yes, these are some of my personal favorites, but these are also ranked on the number of listens the views, and the amount of comments that we received after the podcast dropped. So top 10 episodes from 2023 is based on downloads and listener comments. So this is our holiday treat for you. Um, As we roll into uh, countdown number 10, number 10 to 6, that's what we're going to do. This will drop on Christmas Eve. So here we go. Number 10 is episode 58. Stacy Renee Wright. In this podcast episode, we had Stacy Renee Wright as the guest. She is an entrepreneur with extensive experience in starting businesses. Stacy discussed her journey and how she is running two companies. One's focused on bringing new in- inventions to life and promoting mental wellness, and the other is supporting female entrepreneurs through a community called CEO Essentials. Um, she shared her story behind uh, her first product, a bathtub footrest for people whose feet don't reach the end of the tub. Pretty inventive. Um, she also shared that she had five businesses over the last uh, 20 years. Um, a lot, she had a lot of failures. Um, uh, she had a divorce. I mean, her personal story and those setbacks, you know, she she let it all uh, out. So go listen to that episode. It's it's really inspiring um, to hear from somebody that, uh, you know, had a success and then a setback and then now back uh, ramping up to um, on the path to succeed. And she is succeeding. That is episode number 58, St- Stacy Renee. Today, welcome Stacy to our first live podcast. Welcome, Stacy. Stacy Wright. Thank you. Yes, I love the music. That was really a good vibe. 
<laughs> that's what? right. The guests couldn't hear it either. Okay. okay that's right. So two votes, three votes for the vibe. That's cool, right. Cool, cool, cool. And, yeah. and Stacy, just give us a little intro of you. Just give us the 30,000 foot. Okay. Okay. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I've had five businesses over the last 20 years. Oh my the uh, business number three ended in a complete and utter success and then a complete and utter disaster because of a lawsuit that happened. Mm. And so um, from that point, I uh, restarted everything as a middle-aged single mom. And here I am today. Now I have two companies, two patents, three products, and four brands. Fantastic. Oh my so goodness. tell us about those two companies. Yeah. Okay. So my two companies, I, my one is called IP to market and we bring new inventions to life. So okay. myself and three partners, I have a patent attorney, uh, engineer and a design person, and we have built a machine that can just spit out new inventions. We only work on patented products. And the whole purpose of the company is to create a business that, cr that supports an environment of mental wellness. Oh, so it nice. is to solve a social issue that we have, which is the mental health crisis that we're all experiencing. We're all touched by on some level. I believe that the society we live in is broke, right? When we have kids coming to school with mental illness at five years old, it's an environmental problem. Like it's a societal problem. Mm -hmm. And so business creates the societies we live in. And so if we do our businesses differently, which I'm seeing every day when I see female entrepreneurs, you know, running their businesses different, differently than we've ever done before, that's going to create a different society that we live in. So that's kind of a big picture of why I'm doing the business I'm doing Yeah, to create a business where we can um, support the employees, lessen the stress. And I'll I could tell you a little bit more about that down the road, but that yeah. was the whole idea it was social impact. We're going to create a company that supports mental wellness. And so we have, that's the one we have two patents, three products, four brands. Wow. And then the other company I have is called CEO essentials, which is, it's a community of female entrepreneurs where we support each other. We have some masterminds, we have a community okay. where we just really, none of us have this figured out and where we're going is very different than where we've been. Thank God. Mm -hmm. so we're all figuring out together. And, and so I love the community. I love being around female entrepreneurs and, and we help each other along the path. Well, you just added two to your community. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. I'd love to have y'all. So as part of the IP uh, the, the IP business yes, around I mental health, the, what are the products? Like when you said that you got have this like engine, you're with your team to develop patents. Is it technology? Is it um, like actual tangible products? We're uh, working on tangible products right okay. now. Yes. But well, we have the ability to do technology. But we, um, our first product, you're going to love this. It's a bathtub footrest for people whose feet don't reach the end of the tub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because then you're just on your heel. Yeah. Well, then you're drowning. You're drowning. You're, you're <laughs> writing and reading your book. You can't keep yourself up. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God. So who came up with that? Is it just kind of an, you know, an innovation ecosystem that are like, okay, what's, what problems are we solving? <laughs> I was, well, I was funny because I was sitting at my friend's office and I'm telling her about this vision for this manufacturing plant where we're going to make these the products and we're going to support mental wellness. And I'm telling her all about it. I'm so excited. And she said, Stacy, that sounds great. What product are you going to manufacture? And I said, I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Let me get back to you on that. And she said, Well, oh, you I'm started not. with your why, right? Yeah. Right. You started with that. <laughs> what can come later? Yeah, exactly. And she said, well, I have an idea for you. And I said, well, what, what's that? And she said, well, I can never take a big girl bath. I said, what, what do you mean you can't? What is a big girl bath? And she said, well, you know, when I'm sipping my wine and I'm reading my book, I'm like, okay, why can't you take one of those? She said, because when I'm doing that, I'm drowning because my feet don't reach the end of the tub. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's a big problem. And she's, she's five foot seven. So, you know, the average height of women in the U.S. is five foot four. So if she's having that problem. It's a pretty big problem. Yeah, and wait, I have that problem. I guess I, was like, I, I had that just, problem. Yeah. And I didn't think I had I never, a really I didn't big even tub. think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay, yeah. check. So two more customers. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Stacy, you know, with the with the uh, female, the the female entrepreneurs and, and that community, what um 
what are you seeing as the differences? And, and also you made the comment of women run their businesses differently and actually can help create more of a societal change. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that. Cause that, uh, I, I, I can tell you, I feel that way as a mm-hmm. female entrepreneur and CEO, but I'm curious from your perspective, seeing it from a much bigger uh, community. Yeah. Well, what I'm seeing is just the, the visions that I'm getting to bring to life, the inspirations that I'm getting. But then I also ha- I have a mastermind, right? So we're all talking, we're all mm-hmm. working out these problems. The girl, the woman who was the inventor for the bathtub footrest, she owns an insurance agency. And so okay. you think, well, how can an insurance agency change the world? Well, she came to, she came to the mastermind and said, y'all, this working 40 hours a week is just not giving me the amount of time I need with my kid and my husband. Mm -hmm. And then she thought, well, her very next thought was if I'm having this problem with my time, what are the single moms that are working for me going Mm -hmm. through? Mm -hmm. They're going to be going through it much worse. Yeah. And so she came to her team and said, Hey, you all want to work less? And they're like, yeah. And she said, okay, if we can, if we can keep the, tra- the trajectory of growth in the business, we can keep everything sustainable. Episode number nine is Mike Watts. In this episode, we had Mike Watts of Love Handle USA. Now, Mike discusses his, his entrepreneur journey and how he started his sixth company after leaving corporate America. Uh, he talks about his uh, lots of different previous ventures, um, selling a product called Rainsorb. Um, oh, he went really deep on his experience with, with licensing pat- patents, um, bringing innovative products to market, working with his family, hiring his whole family as part of his business. Um, he also shared a really unique story of how he has a connection to Shark Tank. So, you know, Bluff Handle is a prime example of how chaos and messiness can lead to growth and success in this world of entrepreneurship. But go check that episode out. That was episode number 48 with Mike Watts. That feedback from them, like how is that ongoing loop uh, is that just coming in through like reviews on your, on the website or in Amazon? I mean, how, you know, how, how does that feedback loop work? That's a great question. And it's a lot of different ways. We actively ask for everybody that purchased from us gets a review um, request and, okay. and it's a very easy form for them to fill out on their, on their email. They don't even have to leave the email to, to give us a review. We have a helpline that my amazing mother-in-law uh, manages <laughs> and she's the biggest love handle fan and just the, the, the sweetest person. So it's, she's the perfect person to be there, you know, as an advocate for the, she really, she's a customer advocate for us. <laughs> and um, you know, we do, we read every review on Amazon. We read every review on our website and we're always looking for a way Look, any post on social media. We have social media listening and we look at the comments and like, what are people saying? What are their pain points? What do they wish that it, did do that it doesn't do even if it's great the way it is what would make it better and that's what allowed us to evolve our product too so how many products do you do you have as a is it different kind of product styles and types to meet different needs or is it more just like products in different colors like how is your product mix it's a bit of both so okay. we've got you know the, our number one product is this is the love handle pro yeah this is our pro model it's got the kickstand it's got two stages and it's got the magnets. But what's neat about it is that it's personalized. So you can actually change the strap and switch it out for a new style. Oh. And so we sell replacement straps and now we're getting into licensing. And so you'll be able to have sports teams or rock bands or whatever, like, and express your style or match your outfit or whatever you want to do. So that's it. We also have a MagSafe version. So people that like the wireless charge, they can magnetically attach it to the back of their phone and then take it off to charge their phone. And then we've got a wallet version that's about to come out. Um, you know, so there's just like several iterations, but then they all have sort of limitless designs. Yeah. I love that. So licensing, whoa, how did you, you know, is that, was that hard to get into and to kind of navigate that role? Cause we've heard from other founders of, some, some it's easy and others are like, oh, this is too complex. I can't, I can't do this. We well, got to have to pivot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work in progress, Jennifer. It's like one of those <laughs> right now we are in negotiations and as my advice would be to go partner with someone. I think partnership okay. is, is something that is a big deal for what, whatever you're doing in business, right? Like whether you're trying, you know, working with Damon John or you're working with somebody that has license, go find somebody that has the licenses 
make sure you have a product that you know has enough volume and velocity and customers to to warrant that okay if you can partner with somebody that has it then you can typically work a deal where you'll you'll be a manufacturer for them okay and they'll turn around they'll sell to their customers but they'll sell back to you at a reduced rate. And then now I can turn around and resell it on my website or Amazon right. or to another. So you're almost like a, you're a sub to those, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And okay. If you go long enough, then you, and you get, you see the demand, right? Start. That's right. The steps, then you can go and get acquire the licenses on your own and cut that, you know, that layer of margin out, but that's a great uh, way to park. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's great advice. So, so um, does Damon still continue to kind of give you support and, and, uh, I guess advice and coaching or is he just really kind of like one of those, a mentor friend? <laughs> it's become a bit of both. Okay. Um, it's mentor first and you know, he's a busy, he's the number one paid speaker in the country right now. Yeah. So he's super, super busy and he's got a great company that he runs. And I just continue to try to, we make, you know, when he gives gifts out, he's gifting our product. Oh my so goodness. That's a way to that add is... value back to us. And, um, yeah, so that helps. But then he's, you know, early on, he was like, got us on QVC and Home Shopping Network and yeah. Good Morning America and those things. So that was a, a valuable uh, benefit to us. But even, and even today, like he's able to get us, you know, we were giving samples to Barstool Sports and to, you know, the Dallas Mavericks via Mark Cuban and like yeah. different ways to to get product in the right people's hands. Access is really what what those guys what have. he helps that's amazing that's like priceless uh connections right yeah. there and it just took some persistence right that's right and having a a more genuine i guess per, uh, purview and i need how do i support them how do i give mm -hmm. value to that person versus what are they giving to me that's, that's just yeah. a the world will, will, will pay you for value whatever whether it's a person or just your community at large, the more value you can deliver, the more you'll get. People go out, they try to start a business to make money. Yeah. Money's a byproduct of value. So the more value you can give the world, then the more money that you'll end up with. Number eight, it was episode 44. That is Ebony Sullivan. Uh, Ebony Sullivan talks about how she joined her mother's business, uh, a tradesman, um, Cassie Electric which was originally just a hobby business for her mom. But she talks about coming in as the COO, kind of taking over. How do you take over? Her mom wants to retire. Um, but uh, how do you come in and scale a business? And they have gone from like zero to 60 in such a short time. Um, but th such a great episode. She talks about um, building generational wealth. Um, how do you break, how do you also, uh, uh, create this path for apprenticeship so that the the journeyman and the tradesman um, there's there's a path a career path there um, but just and leaving a legacy so it's a great episode again episode 44 with Ebony Sullivan she is number eight Yes, we made money and it was a lifestyle business for our family. She could pay for vacations for us. She could take care of her grandchildren. She lived a very nice lifestyle. Yeah. However, she was still registered as a solopreneur. We did not have any financial information. We didn't know if we were scalable. We had no health insurance, nothing. It was just literally a day by day business. And so I took how long, how long was the business when you came along and you started looking 20 at 20 years. At least 20 years my mom had been doing this. I mean, for 20 years, she had made a very good reputation for herself, mm -hmm. but everything was referral-based. There was no website. There was no social media. <laughs> everything was directly tied to her. Even the cards had her cell phone number on them, right? <laughs> so like the first year was unmangling the, the mess. And it was really creating an identity for my mother so she could have her herself back. Mm -hmm. and then creating a brand for Cassie Electric where it could stand on its own. And so we spent that first year just creating identities for the business and as well as for my mother. Um, and since that time, we've grown the business three times. So when we started, we were 200,000 revenue. Uh, we hit a million point two this year in sales. So we've grown the business tremendously. tremendously. Um, and we see on the horizon that we'll be a multi-million dollar company. We'll be in several states. Um, and we'll also be, you know, working with the government across hopefully the United States and maybe even Puerto Rico. 
That is fantastic. And I'm just going to take a pause. We need to celebrate your uh, over a million revenue win. That's so cool. Dude, because you, and Evan, I don't know if I, if you know these stats, but you know, when you look at, this is from the U S consensus uh, bureau where mm -hmm. they said, you know, 49% of all businesses are woman owned. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you look at that's 13, what million businesses in the United States of woman owned businesses, only 2% of those are over a million in sales. Wow. No, so the okay. fact that you have hit that milestone, you need to celebrate. Man. And we're, we yeah, are. that is fantastic. You're in different business when you get to a million dollars. That's right. Number seven, we have Keith Ablo. Uh, that is episode number 73. In this episode, oh, Keith Ablo, he is the founder of Pain to Power and Help 22. This was one, actually one of my favorite episodes. He discusses the importance of storytelling, how it's crucial role. It's a crucial role in the success of individuals and businesses, especially with the CEO. Um, he is a psychologist. He gets into the, the nitty gritty and the dive deep on what's holding, what's the fear, what's the struggles, what's the past um, challenges that a CEO or a leader has, and how do you make those breakthroughs in order to, to expand and scale your company and become the leader that you want to be. Um, be. But he goes in um, to that process and his experience. It, it's just uh, the, the highlights that um, he gave during that episode um, was so wonderful. I enjoyed our conversation. I think you will too. That was episode number 73, Keith Ablo. For having me. Well, why don't you just start us out and tell us about your entrepreneurial journey? Well, so... Everything I've done in my professional life revolves around story uh, and getting the narrative to hang together and be a nonfiction narrative. Even when I'm writing novels, which I've done, written a bit, a bunch of novels, a bunch of uh, nonfiction books, 16 in all, a couple Whoa. of new bestsellers. But the real message that I'm trying to deliver is that everything's a story. So everybody's life is a story. Every business is a story. That's right. And so, you know, you, when you create a deck or you put together a team um, or you try to effort putting together the company, it's all about is the story nonfiction, <laughs> um, right? Because the fiction will kill you. <laughs> and, and, uh, and that's also when I started Pain to Power, which is essentially coaching for individuals and CEOs and mm -hmm. founders and entrepreneurs, basically it's because people have an inherent desire to avoid pain, right? And so we tend to gloss over the trouble spots in our lives, uh. sometimes in chapters long ago. Mm -hmm. um, and those two, those complications, if you can't understand them, then they'll manifest themselves later as either depression or anxiety or bad choices. Same thing, when you're starting a company, very often in the back of your mind, you know that there's something about it that doesn't make sense. It's a pain point. Huh. Um, you gloss over it because it's more comfortable to tell a fun story, right. and, uh, one that tends towards success. But um, in the end, getting into the pain makes you more powerful. And hmm. every founder, um, I'm a founder too, yep. every founder knows that it's in those painful periods as well of the journey that you might find the most important strength that your company needs to develop or exploit. And anyhow, flexing your muscles as a founder entrepreneur um, is part of the journey too. You're getting tougher, smarter, faster, mm -hmm. wiser. Uh, so we have number six. That is episode number 36 with Christine uh, Gotro. Uh, this podcast, uh, you know, Christine Gotro, it's spelled a little different. <laughs> it's pronounced Gotro, uh, but it's uh, it's spelled G-A-U-T-R-E-A-U-X. But she is the founder of Women Connected in Wisdom, and she provides, uh, you know, primarily coaching for for women. But she's created this wonderful community um, for uh supporting women in business, for, for supporting women entrepreneurs, 
um, uplifting women's sto stories, uh, and and her story and her journey was really unique, along with her partner Shannon Mitchell, um, providing a platform for women's voices. So uh, we we got a lot of great comments, really good. Um, feedback on that that uh, episode. So I highly recommend that one. That is episode number 36 with Christine Petro. And the power of that we all have struggles, right? <laughs> we all have things, and especially as women who are often caregiving children, they're caregiving parents, they may be doing Husband. both at the same time, they're, <laughs> right? Their communities, their businesses, like, right. how do we juggle all of that, right? Because right. we talk every week about the eight dimensions of wellness. We That's how our show's broken down and our okay. book's broken down. Because what we want to look at is how do we do it and maintain our self-care and sustain our yeah. self-care? And not just like, you know, in America, often we think of, oh, it's just our physical. Like, you know, are we getting to the gym enough? And, so, and there's right. so much more than that. Right. Like the pandemic showed us about our social wellness. Like, how do oh. we maintain that? How do we have those healthy relationships? Right. And tomorrow we're talking about environmental wellness and not just <laughs> our larger world, but also our homes and our yeah. offices and our car, like the places that we thrive in. Right. And it's changed. It? You know, oh. we've seen where work workspace and uh, you right? know, corporations are redesigning the spaces because of of that nurturing, you know, the calm or the calmness. And even I noticed the way I've kind of shifted my own design or my own little workspace of it's changed from two and three years ago of right? how I need to have that environment around me to be, to, <laughs> to be productive or to feel, um, you know, to feel good. I mean, it's just, right? or, to, or to feel safe or, you know, again, to be more productive and, and try to focus because that, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, you know that you get just Absolutely. everything thrown at you. Um, so, so let me ask you, so as you kind of build these two, Sure. Uh, these two, you know, businesses and, mm -hmm. and what's been the biggest, like your biggest hurdle, the biggest barrier that you have found, especially it's, you know, you, you're doing some of this stuff like we did. We launched during right. 20, right. 2022. Um, and it looks like you guys did a lot of stuff too, but yeah. What right. were the biggest barriers? Absolutely. You know, I think one of my biggest barriers is not trying to do it all by myself. I think, you know, when you start as a solopreneur and you're starting to build a team and you're starting to build a business, um, the knowing the when of when to bring this person on yeah. or how to do this, I think that was one of our biggest and um and that's why I love doing it in partnership. I'm so much, it's yeah. so much easier to bounce something <laughs> off somebody else and say, what do you think? Versus right. I definitely grew Christine Gotro Consulting much slower than Women Connected and Wisdom is growing. And I attribute that to my business partner. Yeah. And and the other thing is that that partnership part of uh, setting your expectations and having your contracts. And, and Brene Brown likes to say clarity is kindness, right? Yes, it and is. And that just the, I don't know, I am a connector and doing it in community. I love that. So I would think when I'm getting out of my own way yeah. is oftentimes like not thinking big enough or not, um, n not playing small. Right. I right. Think. right. Yeah. It, so then what was your biggest, you know, lessons learned, your big aha of like, you know, oh, and they, <laughs> it continues, it continues to be <laughs> connection and collaboration over competition. Mm. You know, we are set up, especially in America as women to compete oh. with each other yes, we and are. to tear each other down and in not having that model, like right. the big aha that we don't have to do it, how the system is set up. Yeah. And it's so easy to fall into it. Like the white male dominant patriarchy. It's so easy to fall into it and be like, Oh, this is the way to do it. Yeah. And it's like, Oh yeah, let's do it differently. That's and some of the things work. I mean, some yeah. of the things absolutely work. But making that, that we don't have to just do it because that's the way it's always been done. Right. That we can look at it. We can talk about it. We can do it in community. We can collaborate <laughs> and not compete. 
I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. However you you choose to celebrate the holidays, um, please stay safe, take care, uh, get some, you know, for founders and entrepreneurs out there, out, out there get some much needed rest and rejuvenation and uh, keep moving forward and check into Orange Whip or Hello Chaos for uh, helping you, helping you find the resources you need. Thanks again.